Welcome. I'm here speaking with Martin Roos, author of the book, The Price of Rights, Regulating International Labor Migration, by Princeton University Press. So Martin, you've written a book about one of the most controversial national and global policy issues, how to regulate immigration and the rights of migrant workers. What is your main argument? Well, the key finding of the book is that when you look at the labor migration policies of high-income countries, you can see a trade-off between openness to admitting migrant workers and the rights granted to migrants after admission. More open admission policies tend to be associated with greater restrictions of migrant rights. So that means that you cannot always have both more migration and more rights for migrant workers. From a global justice point of view, you can argue that both more migration and more rights are good things. But my analysis finds that in practice there are tensions. And how to deal with this tension is, in my view, one of the major questions of national and global governance of international labor migration. So you've uh, reached the conclusion that we can't always have more migration and more rights. Uh, what kind of analysis is this based on? Well, the argument is really based on quite extensive analysis of the key features and variations of labor immigration policies in high-income countries. I look at over 40 countries and look at how they deal with immigration and how and why they restrict the rights of migrant workers. And that analysis finds that trade-off between openness and rights in many countries' policies. I also look at why countries restrict the rights of migrant workers. And unsurprisingly, I find that cost-benefit considerations drive many of these restrictions. So if specific rights are perceived to create net costs for the receiving country, for example, offering low-skilled migrant workers access to social housing or other welfare benefits, then countries will often respond by restricting these rights in order to be able to admit migrant workers. So what are the implications of the openness rights trade-off for policy debates? Well, the implication is that insisting on greater equality of rights for migrant workers can come at the price of more restrictive immigration policies. So when you look at human rights-based approaches to migration, some of these approaches have a blind spot because they are primarily concerned with protecting the rights of existing migrants without necessarily considering the consequences for the admission of new migrant workers. A second consequence is for global governance debates. I think it's really important that we bring together people and organizations that advocate more migration, such as the World Bank, and those that call for better protection of migrant workers' rights. We need to have an open debate of this tension, and that really has not happened so far. So what are the re recommendations your book makes? Well, different people will think about the trade-off between openness and rights in international labor migration in very different ways. There's no one right answer. I'm taking quite a pragmatic approach in the book, and I'm su suggesting that we focus on protecting a universal set of core rights, but we allow receiving countries to restrict a few specific rights that create net costs for these countries and therefore are obstacles to more open admission policies. So in practice, that means that I advocate liberalizing international labor migration, especially of lower skilled migrant workers, through temporary migration programs that protect a certain set of core rights, but that allow selected and careful restrictions of a few specific rights. Martin, thank you for speaking about your book. Thank you.